Welcome to this service for the first Sunday after Easter, the 19th of April. I'm Lynn Clayton, Church Warden at St Helens and St Barnabas Churches in Orr Hastings. And I'm Ben Clayton, in charge of video production today. This Jesus, whom you crucified, is both Lord and Christ. Greater love has no man than this, that he lay down his life for his friends. You are my friends if you do what I say. Lord, help us to obey. Lord, we live within your remarkable creation. All around us there's evidence of your power and glory. Yet you came to us as one who serves. You stand at our door and knock, waiting to be invited in. So now we welcome you to come and be alongside us, uniting us even when we're apart as we worship you now. you have my heart and I will search for yours Jesus take my life and lead me on Lord you have my heart and I will search for yours let me be to you a sacrifice and I will praise you Lord and I will sing of love come down and as you from Acts 2, 22 to 36. Peter addresses the crowd. Peter said, Men of Israel, listen to this. Jesus of Nazareth was a man accredited by God to you by miracles, wonders and signs, which God did among you through him, as you yourselves know. This man was handed over to you by God's set purpose and foreknowledge, and you, with the help of wicked men, put him to death by nailing him to the cross. But God raised him from the dead, freeing him from the agony of death, for it was impossible for death to keep its hold on him. David said about him, I saw the Lord always before me, because he is at my right hand, I will not be shaken. 
Brothers, I can tell you confidently that the patriarch David died and was buried, and his tomb is here to this day. But he was a prophet and knew that God had promised him on oath that he would place one of his descendants on his throne. Seeing what was ahead, he spoke of the resurrection of the Christ, that he was not abandoned to the grave, nor did his body see decay. God has raised this Jesus to life, and we are all witnesses of the fact. Therefore, let all Israel be assured of this. God has made this Jesus whom you crucified, both Lord and Christ. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. And now over to Canon Penny Avan for today's sermon. The disciples had been in at least partial lockdown for almost six weeks, apart from brief excursions, that is, to Galilee and the Mount of Olives. Unlike ours, theirs had been self-imposed lockdown out of fear of what might happen to them following Jesus' supposed disappearance. Quite a few people had seen the resurrected Jesus. In fact, Paul records in his first letter to the Christians at Corinth that up to 500 had seen him on any one occasion. But for the most part, non-believers and skeptics remained in ignorance and didn't really believe these stories of resurrection. Like many today, they thought it was pure nonsense or at best wishful thinking by a few gullible men and women from the north of the country, men and women so afraid they locked themselves away. So much for Jesus of Nazareth and his claim to be the Messiah. Rome was still in charge and for most people life had returned to normal. The excitement of six weeks previously appears largely to have been forgotten. How easily we forget. Life moves on. We return to normal patterns, jobs, concerns and worries. What had gone on before was yesterday's news and might never have been. Maybe this is a warning for us. Perhaps we have the luxury of enjoying more space and time to think and pray. Maybe we have taken up new hobbies or learnt to appreciate our natural surroundings as they unfold in all the delicate colours of spring. Perhaps we've learned to be less independent or maybe more thoughtful towards others. Maybe we now value the self-giving of others on our behalf to serve us and provide for our needs. As Christians, unable to meet together for worship, we have perhaps discovered new ways of worship or listening to our Father and have become less dependent on others' teaching and insight, readier to search for a closeness to the Father for ourselves. When life does get back to normal, these lessons and insights could be lost unless we make a conscious effort to remember them and to carve out time in our usually busy lives for listening and pondering, for taking time to stand and stare. But today's reading reminds us that something else had happened to bring about lasting change. We'll be thinking more about the coming of the Spirit when we celebrate Pentecost at the end of next month. So for now, Let's focus on an immediate change which took place. Those lockdown disciples had burst out of their self-imposed prison and moved out onto the streets of Jerusalem, now crowded for a second major festival of the season. All of them had the gift of speaking out, but Luke records Peter's words as he stood up and addressed the crowd. It's a sermon which ends with an affirmation of faith and a challenge. The affirmation of faith comes in the words, God has made this Jesus, 
both Lord and Christ. Whatever the authorities, both Jewish and Roman, had tried to do, had failed because God had asserted his authority. Jesus was not only Messiah, but he is Lord and Christ. In other words, he has the same authority and power as the Father. Peter might have added, Jesus was not only human, but he was and still is God himself. The challenge comes in the middle of that phrase. This Jesus whom you crucified is both Lord and Christ. Many could have turned round and said, it's nothing to do with me, or even that I wasn't even there. They could have disowned the actions and do what we're so fond of doing now, blame somebody else. In fact, there is a great sense of corporate responsibility here, a crowd response of, well, what shall we do? There was an acceptance that in part they were all to blame. Now, I'm not saying that we must all take responsibility for infecting others with COVID-19. But we do all have to take responsibility for our actions and attitudes. We have to keep to the rules. By now, they're very familiar. Stay safe. Stay home. The caring for others. The reaching out with the love of Jesus where and as we're able. But the truth is that we do all share in the responsibility for Jesus' death. Paul reminds us in Romans 3, For all have sinned and fall short of the glory of God. But he also reminds us in his letter to the Greek Christians at Philippi, I consider everything a loss compared to the surpassing greatness of knowing Christ Jesus my Lord. I want to know Christ and the power of his resurrection and the fellowship of sharing in his sufferings, becoming like him in his death, and so somehow to attain to the resurrection from the dead. Paul, like Peter, was talking about a new freedom, one so much greater than we will feel when we're released from lockdown. It's a freedom to be not like everyone else, but to be ourselves as God our Father made us. Free to be creative and caring. Free to be holy and humble. Free to be thankful and filled with praise and the desire to worship and draw close to him. His is a promise not only for us, but for all who believe. A promise for us to share as we phone and chat to friends and neighbours, as we pray for those suffering from the effects of isolation on mental ill health, from stress or abuse. God has made this Jesus both Lord and Christ. This Jesus is our Jesus. He's our servant, our friend, our Lord. Alleluia, indeed. May God continue to bless you as you listen, as you watch, as you pray. Amen. Thank you, Penny. We're now going to worship with Such Love, sung by Ingrid Dumosh. for the shame 
now we have the prayers. The words will appear on screen and your response is highlighted in yellow. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, knowing that you love us, we come to you for help and healing. For the lonely, isolated, abused and fearful, may they discover a new peace and protection in Jesus the Comforter. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. For those suffering from illness or are facing the need for medical care, for medical staff, carers and backup staff, that they might know the wonder of your healing and strength. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. For all who serve the community as teachers, farmers, shop workers, delivery drivers, postal workers and so many more, may they experience care in their service and protection as they go about their daily work. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. For government ministers and advisers, for community leaders and all who have responsibility for making vital decisions, that they may have the wisdom to do what is right. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. For all Christian communities in this country and around the world, that we may remain firm to our faith in Jesus, the resurrection and the life, and live out our faith in the world Jesus died to save. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. The Collect for Today Almighty Father, you have given Jesus to die for us and to rise again to set us free for the consequences of our sins. May we serve you by living lives guided by your word and truth. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. The Lord's Prayer Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power and the glory are yours, now and for ever. Amen. So may the love and power of the risen Christ be with us, strengthening us to love and serve him day by day. And the blessing of God, the Father, the Son and the Holy Spirit be with us today and for evermore. Amen. Thank you for joining us this morning. Keep safe and we look forward to you joining us again for the service on the 26th of April.